was just telling somebody a few minutes ago, no matter where I am, if I ask people to raise their hands, there's always somebody who's been at these national parks. Mesa Verde is um, a place where the Puebloan Indians lived in these kind of dwellings that were built into caves. And it's now a World Heritage Site as well as a national park. And you can go, you can crawl around in the different um, sites and even go down into the, into the um, kivas, which is like their religious chamber. And you can just kind of get a feeling for their whole spiritual thing. So I was afforded the opportunity to spend two weeks living in the park in um, a traditional building called a hogan, which is kind of like this mud thing. <laughs> it looks like this big mud beehive, but it was actually um, modernized. But anyway, um, I got to live there and write music. So what you're going to hear for the next 25 minutes is some music from um, Mesa Verde. This first piece, Chapin Daybreak, was written one morning. I went to the Chapin Amphitheater, which is just this beautiful stone setting, and I watched the sunrise. And I took my oboe, and the birds were chirping and everything, and the insects were buzzing. And I just made up this melody that you'll hear at the very beginning, and then developed it into a piece. And um, also, what I did is I put together photos of each of the places that I wrote the piece about. So this piece, Chape and Daybreak, actually I'll just pass this around because we're all friends, right? You can look, if, if you're lucky enough to get the one I'm playing at that moment, or you can just keep passing it around, that's okay.
of the artist in residency is I was able to go into a lot of the sites that you aren't allowed to go into when you're a tourist. I got special little passes, a little um, handheld uh, radio to go in. And I did go to one site that was not open to the public called Mug House. And this next piece is a piece written um, when I went there at sunset. It was beautiful. So if anybody, whoever's got the book, that, that's, you're going to see the sunset on the uh, rocks. It's gorgeous. people at my concerts, you might fall asleep, but that's actually okay. <laughs> it means that you're nice and relaxed. Living walls, the um, Puebloan people believe that the spirits still live in the walls. And um, the rangers talked about how sacred and, you know, there are certain places you weren't supposed to touch. So it was really a very moving experience to be in these places at night alone and just think about, you know, the people that lived there back in the 1200s. No ringing thumbs out in the
fun things about this um, most recent recording I did is I decided I was going to grab my kids before they all disappeared in heaven, heaven knows where. <laughs> They're all in college now, so I'd grab them when they were home on vacation and, and get them to take little parts. I have a, a French horn player, a cello player, and a viola player in my family. And one of the pieces is actually like a string quartet. I overdubbed the, the um, cello and the viola. Forget the violence, we don't need high. <laughs> and um, that was a really spacey piece. But anyway, so this piece is actually a, my daughter who's I won't say she's precocious, but she's self-assured, said, you know, I really think I should just have a French horn solo on this recording. So I said, okay. So this is her French horn recording, but she just didn't happen to make it, so I'll play it on. <laughs> tell you that's obviously water. The Seep Spring is, um, I had, I was so lucky when I played this concert in Mesa Verde this summer, um, the pianist, the, the local pianist is also a geologist. So I said, knock yourself out. Go talk about, and she starts talking about the porous of the stone. Anyway, this is, the water seeps through and that's how they got their water in the desert. They'd collect the water in these little containers. You know, they'd show the actual place where the little bowl was, and um, they'd collect the water from the seep springs. So that's what that was supposed to convey musically. Sandstone angles is just, again, about all the angles, um, looking at these different buildings in the um, sites.
believe they had major sevens out there. I do believe. A little, little too jazzy, but I, I think either they were jazzy or else maybe they were just out of tune, but I think it might have been happening. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming out on your busy uh, today, Wednesday. Busy Wednesday. Well, every day is busy, right? Everybody's, I know, got tons of things on their schedule. So I really appreciate you taking time to, to get down here and um, come hear this music. And of course, support the program here at Trinity. Thank you so much, Karen, for doing a lovely job. Please, let's all thank you. Um, I often do these concerts with a video component, a video of images, and they're often at churches. I've done them at the planetarium. 2016 is the National Park Centennial. I'm trying to gear up now, trying to find some people around here to do a whole National Park Soundscapes concert with video. So keep your eyes open. If I get lucky, get another thing from RMF. Maybe I can, <laughs> maybe I can pull it up. Um, I brought my book of photos. If you want to come up and look at it, Photos from Mesa Verde, I put that together after my artist in residency. People who've been there can look and see places that they saw before, or people who haven't been there can check them out. There's some CDs, also um, Zion and Bryce and Glacier are here too. So if you want to see those, please come up and look at them. Again, thank you very much. We'll end with Farview. <laughs> <laughs>